Hi, welcome to Replicate This After Effects Edition Problem Number 7 Tutorial, wherein we will create a road scene with a BMW speeding by a what looks to be a Swedish countryside. Let's start off by importing one of the files. You should have downloaded road.jpg and BMW 2002 TII from Learning Suite already. Let's click on road.jpg and let's just import that as footage. Notice how I did not change it to composition. This is just a piece of footage and then let's go back to import the BMW PSD. I'm going to select that and I'm going to go down here and not import as footage but import as composition retain layer sizes. Road.jpg was imported as footage. The PSD will be imported as a composition retaining layer sizes. Click open. Whenever you get this dialog box that pops up and asks you whether you want to have editable layer styles or whether you want to merge the layer styles into footage, I always leave it as this option, merge layer styles. Click OK. And what we have here is a tiny, well not tiny, there's, there's our size. Um, this is a composition that will need to be enlarged because there's not much room for a background scene to be placed in here, a background image. Let's go to Composition Settings, Command K, or Composition, Composition Settings, and let us enlarge our composition size. Before we do, however, I want to uncheck Lock Aspect Ratio because I happen to know that we are going to have a 16 by 9 aspect movie here. And I'm going to type in 1920 by 1080. That is full 1080p HD. Everything else here looks good. 30 frames, square pixels. Let's click OK. All right, that is how big our composition is now. I am going to delete or at least get these rules out of the way. Uh, guides, rather. There we go. I want to enlarge my composition to fill the window. As you can see, it's about 80.2. What I just did there with the keyboard shortcut is I fit up to 200%, and that was option slash. Option slash, which is also the question mark key. Option slash enlarges your composition to fill the window up to, most of the time it's up to 100%, but in this case, it says 200%. So that is filling our screen now, and it is ready to have the road.jpg layer dragged into the timeline as the backmost layer. I want to snap that to zero on my timeline by hitting the left bracket button. That will snap any currently selected layer to the current time indicator, which was at zero. Or if it wasn't at zero, it was after I clicked the home button on my extended keyboard. So. As it looks right now, we have an orange BMW 2002 driving in the flowers or levitating above the road, neither of which is what we want. So let's do something real quick. Let's select all three layers of the car and let's move them down onto the road. There, that is, that's what we're looking for. Okay, we're going to use a little bit of parenting here. We need to tie our wheels to the car, but first we need to rotate them. So to get our parenting, yeah, I'm going to click the toggle switches and modes button so I can get these switches up, and then I'm going to right click along this gray strip right here that features the switch labels, right click or control click, and select the parent column. All right. <clears throat> first thing, I, it doesn't really matter the order that I do this in, but just for simplicity's sake, let's take our front wheel and let us add a rotation keyframe. Now the easiest, quickest way to get a rotation keyframe is to click Option R. That gives us a rotation keyframe with zero rotation at zero on our timeline. I want to jump to three seconds and I want to have, let's see, the wheel should turn maybe about six times over three seconds. I want to do the same thing to the rear wheel. Now in this case, I can add the exact same keyframes to the rear wheel because I happen to know they're both going to be spinning in place. You can't always copy and paste keyframes from layer to layer, but in this case, I know that I can. Rotation is one of those safer properties to copy. So I'm going to go to zero. I'm going to, with both of my rotation keyframes selected by 
simply clicking the word rotation under front wheel, I'm going to command C or copy, and I'm going to select rear wheel, and I am going to paste. Now front wheel and rear wheel have rotational keyframes. I can display the rotation keyframes on rear wheel by simply hitting the key R. And what happens if I scrub these two? We can see that they are both turning. All right, I'm going to set my work area to the three second mark and I'm going to use these navigational arrows to jump to that last keyframe. I'm going to hit N on my keyboard to snap the work area to right there. Now that I have two rotating wheels, I can parent them to the chassis. Front wheel and rear wheel, I'm going to select them both and I can just select the pick whip on either one of them and drag it to full chassis. Now what happens now if I drag full chassis is that the wheels are going to follow, which is exactly what I want. Let's open up position by hitting P. Let's go back to zero on our timeline and let's put down a keyframe for position. Remember, I can always hit option P to lay down a position keyframe or I can click the stopwatch. They both do the same thing. So at zero on our timeline, we are on the, you know what? Let's make this a little more interesting. Let's position our BMW off screen at zero and then let's jump over to three seconds. See how I'm using the navigational arrows on other layers that already have keyframes at zero and at three? That's the key to synchronization here. So let's grab our position and let's, at three seconds on our timeline, I'm dragging this across. Now, the way that I'm getting these numbers right here to, to move so quickly, See how if I just drag, it moves slower? If I hold down shift while dragging down this first X field of position, hold down shift will cause the car to move much faster. And that goes for any property that you're scrubbing in your timeline. If you hold down shift, it multiplies it by 10. Now that we have these three seconds of animation, let's hit zero on our keypad or the RAM preview button in our preview panel to get a preview of what's happening here. That's pretty good. I kind of like that. That is all for this tutorial. I hope you have learned a lot and we'll see you in class. Thanks.